Hello everyone. So today I thought I'll probably show, talk about and uh, briefly also show you how I and many others manage their dot files. Now in case you are new to new to Linux or maybe you have been using Linux but you never really bothered about your dot files. So basically dot file is uh, nothing but a configuration which will tell your computer, in fact, tell your specific application how to behave, how to how to work. For, for example, if you have, let us say, Brave installed on your, uh, on your computer, then uh, you will have a directory where your Brave specific configurations will be stored. If you have, uh, let us say, Sync thing, there will be some dot files, configuration files for that particular application. So not each and every application, but like a lot of applications have their dot files. Now, I of course use a uh, uh, lot of these uh, applications. For example, if I just show you my dot files, so usually the dot files are stored in uh, a directory called dot config in your home. And as you can see, I do have like a lot of uh, these uh, dot files, but I don't really need to worry too much about all of them. For example, I can see here that uh, there are some directories that I never really created. In fact, it was uh, uh, created by Git. But I'll come to that. In this video, I want to talk about uh, how I manage my dot files, which is actually a, a very common technique, a very common yet simple technique. But I, I first want to talk about uh, dot files I care about. And this is my config folder. So I do have uh, this uh, Microsoft folder, which I don't really care because uh, this is basically from Teams. I have Brave software. I never really, really modify this. Then the, direct, the directories and the files I care about is uh, MPD, where uh, I have my MPD uh, configurations, basically my music player daemon. And this is very important for me because uh, I basically have some configurations like path to my playlist, path to my music directory, something similar. For MPV, I don't really think I use any configurations for uh, MPV. Yeah, no, nothing, nothing here. For NCMP CPP, this is basically a client of MPD. It is very popular, easy to use uh, client. So I do have some configurations, especially for uh, specifying custom lyrics folder and also for visualization. What else? Then for GTK, two and three. Yeah, these directories are important because uh, let me just, um, no, I mean, not only really 2.0, but in fact, 3.0 is where I keep my bookmarks. And uh, I I don't massively care about it. But still, uh, th these bookmarks, bookmarks are not really my browser bookmarks. But basically, whenever you in, you know, when you try, whenever you're trying to save something, for, for example, when I try to upload a video on YouTube, there's like a dialog box which appears and uh, I need to select the file. And that particular file is something that I can select from my com computer. But if you have these bookmarks set, then uh, those common directories, your favorite directories will appear on the left hand side. So it is actually very convenient. So I do care about this. And uh, what else? Then I have uh, Slack, which I don't care about. Ink space, I don't really have any configuration. For SXHKD, yes, I do care about uh, this because I do have my configurations. For SXIV, again, I use uh, I use uh, the custom mail, not custom mail handler, but custom key handler. Basically, this particular file is, uh, is uh, symlink to my to my shell script, which uh, which I use to invoke some custom commands. And then, then for sync thing, not really any custom configuration. Similarly, for ksnip, I don't really think so. And that is it. So I don't really have a lot of dot files. This is, of course, my dot files for, uh, I mean, the, the files I care about. But I do have this uh, directory in home called uh, dot local. And this is where I basically keep uh, so, so within this local directory I have been where I have uh, my shell scripts and this is again nothing but a sim link to my shell scripts directory but 
the other directory sh- local share is where i keep uh, my fonts and that is it actually uh, so these are the files that i really care about and what i normally do is uh, the way i manage my dot files is nothing but uh, a very common popular technique which is something that uh, you can see on this hacker news uh, site so basically what what you need to do i mean you, you can also follow arch linux uh, documentation basically you, you need to uh, make your home directory as a bare git repository and instead of using git command to do things you basically create your own command or own not command but alias so i use something called as cfg and then you have to make sure that uh, whenever whenever you're doing status you don't really want everything to appear uh, so you can do something like show and track files as no and basically this is it so if i show you my cfg status right now it is basically my my um uh git repository which i invoke with basically this cfg command and at the same time if i let us say modify something let us let us try to modify um maybe a small line in my xinit rc so i can just you know make a change here and i'll try to do cfg status again so i can see that there is a modification i can do cfg add this file no i don't really want to do this <laughs> so i want to do cfg status and then cfg add x in it rc and then i can do cfg of course um, commit i'm trying to remember the commands <laughs> so changes in my x in it rc and that is it you can now you know just check the status and uh, if you're ready you can uh, simply you know push it to your repository and uh, that is it so now your uh, your changes are pushed to your uh, repository which i will show you because yeah why not let me just also show you my Uh, repository which I actually keep on Bitbucket because I prefer Bitbucket. Bitbucket. I do have like GitHub, but I only use GitHub for my public repositories. Um, okay, so this is my my GitHub, and let me just try to increase the size slightly so you can see it properly. So you can see here that uh, my Xinit RC file is uh, this one, which uh, is something which I just you know committed. so i can see all the you know changes here so this is something that i do and uh, when you have to replicate the same setup on a different computer all you need to do you need to basically make sure that you have the alias on that particular uh, uh, computer and then instead of doing git in it bare you can do git clone bare and then of course your repository and make sure the target directory is this one so it's very simple and uh, it works really well amazingly well and this is something that i think uh, you all should try to do because it will actually make your life a lot more easier simpler because uh, not only you you will have a backup of your configurations that you really care about but when you have to basically uh, set up a new computer or migrate to a new co- device or not a device but a computer it will be super smooth for you. you all you need to do i mean now whenever whenever i have to set up a new computer what i do is i basically uh make sure that on the target computer i have all the i mean there is no specific order but but i think the order is that whenever whenever you do do a fresh install make sure you do this on your target computer so you already have like a config folder and then you install all the applications that you need to install like i, I do have a list of all the applications that i need to install using uh, sudo pacman some of the applications i need to install using uh, aur which i do using you know using basically git and then uh, m- make pk pkg command uh, which works really fine but uh, it is not not fully automated i mean uh, i know some people have made their scripts to basically set up their computer and do all of this automatically uh, i will do that i'm i'm hoping to do it whenever i have time but to be honest even if i do it manually um of course there v- the moment you have your your, your config files uh, is of course it might, it might take maybe 10 minutes 
but uh, to install all the applications that you really need, maybe half an hour, one hour, that is it, max. And you will have like a computer, which is basically exactly like what you want or your own configurations. And then of course I have uh, Dropbox for my Emacs and also ThinkThing, which I configure and that is it. And it is very convenient um, the, the way it works, the the way you manage your dot .files because, so, because dot .files will dictate how that target computer will or all the applications will work exactly like you want them to work. And that is it. That is all for today. And uh, I hope I hope you enjoyed watching this video and you learned something new. This video will be live on 1st of January, although I'm making this video on 31st of December. So Happy New Year to all of you and uh, see you next year. All right. Bye bye.